Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Dave TV. It's 12-12-12. 12th of December, 2012. <coughs> Just reading my Washington Post today. Yep. Dave Hester. They're one of my favorite shows. Actually, I... I very I watch less and less TV every day, but I still enjoy watching Storage Wars on A and E. I just I like that. It's just a funny show. Barry and Jared and Brandy and Dave yep, Hester there. Apparently, he's suing the producers of the show, saying that a lot of the lockers are staged. No, <laughs> that they they actually go in and arrange things and hide things in there and hope you know. It's like, hey, you know. It's all lies. TV is all lies. And so is radio. It's all lies. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got the uh, the uh, December radio ratings are for week two of December, which is actually mid-November. Um, and uh, no huge surprises. Although, you know, one of the things we're noticing is that WTOP is no longer always the first station. You know, um, except for the holiday period, you know, when Wash switches to Christmas music and they go to number one, usually WTOP is usually the first station, top of the ratings. Well, in the past half year or so, they're down to second and third place, depending on the ratings. They did pop up to first place there the week of Hurricane Sandy, but TOP is generally no longer the first place station. In fact, Whamu, Whamu, public radio station, a news talker, is typically in first place, um, which is interesting because I don't think there are any other markets in the country where a public radio news talker consistently hits first place. So, you know, tip of the old uh, hoodie to uh, WAMU there. So what we're hearing, uh, Tom Taylor in his uh, Radio Biz newsletter today is reporting that WTOP is doing some little shenanigans there. You know, they have an online signal that they send, uh, they have an on-air signal that they send out on 103.5 and 107.7 and 103.9. And then they have that signal sent out online so people can listen to it, you know, on their computers all over the world, really. But what they do on that online signal, as a lot of radio stations do, is they, they do ad inserts, okay? So, for example, if you're listening to WTOP in London, you're not going to want to hear ads about a local Washington business, you know? So what they do is they will sell ad inserts on the online stream that, you know, are more you know, national or international type advertisers, you know, and make a little extra money doing that. But the problem with that is the ratings firm Arbitron then doesn't count that signal, that online signal on the online listeners as part of your main station's audience. You know, so it's separate. So you have an online rating and you have an on-air rating and it's two separate things. Well, that, that kind of, uh, you know, usually didn't matter because your online listening is really irrelevant uh, basically, but now WTOP seems to be getting a little bit bent out of shape because they're no longer always the number one station in the market. They want that online audience counted in their total ratings. So what they have to do then is get rid of those online ads and make the stream the exact same thing as the on-air stream. Got it? Do you understand that? On-air stream, exactly the same as the online stream. Then Arbitron, the ratings firm, allows those two ratings to be counted together. It's one signal, one signal, two different methods of transmission. It's all counted together. So that'll bump up WTOP's numbers a little bit. And we'll see, will that propel them back to number one? It probably won't do that in the holiday period because WASH is probably going to surge up there. But, you know, next year, will that be enough to get them back to the top place every week or just about every week? I don't know. Again, I still think WNEW, even though it was only 26th place in the latest radio ratings, still has that drip, drip, drip. They're just siphoning off just enough listeners from WTOP to keep them from being number one, and I think that's only going to continue in 2013, unless the CBS decides to pull the plug on uh, W. Um, NEW, which I don't see happening. The other interesting thing about the latest radio ratings that really kind of frazzled me a little bit was the fact that CBS, which is a huge radio company, didn't even have a single station in the top 10 again in the Washington market, but their top station was only 15th place. 15th place, WIAD Fresh 94.7 was 15th place. The other CBS stations, PGC was 16th place. LZL Elzal was 19th place. JFK was 21st place. And of course, WNEW was 26th place. I mean, you got 
four or five major FMers in a market, and your best station is 15th place? I mean, come on, man. You know, you look at Clear Channel. Clear Channel has third place Wash, fourth place Hot 99.5. Uh, they got 10th place big, um, uh, DC 101. Okay. They're sagging a little bit down to 14th place, but still, you know, you look at them and they've got like four or five stations ahead of CBS. I mean, <laughs> even lowly old Cumulus pulled a ninth place with WMAL. Now their ratings are sinking a little bit now that the election's over. I noticed they peaked at about a seventh place around election period. Now they're dripping down to ninth. You know, so who knows? Next week, maybe they'll be 11th. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so that's interesting. Anyhow, whatever, baby. Whatever. All right, folks. Uh, what else is happening in the big news I'm so well prepared for these Dave TVs. <laughs> Laura Ingram. Laura Ingram. A um, lot of rumors that she might be jumping to Cumulus um, following um, Michael Savage. Cumulus uh, seems to be very getting very aggressive for trying to get a lot of these right-wing talkers into its camp. Um, it looks like what the long-term thing for Cumulus is to have its own in-house stable of right-wing talkers so they can put it on their right-wing stations like WMAL and WABC in New York and get rid of people like Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh who are syndicated by um, a company called uh, B -B 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 Premier, Premier, which is owned by Clear Channel, which is a rival. Uh, so, you know, rather than paying money to outside the firm to Clear Channel's premiere, they'd rather just keep their, you know, kind of strong, strong lineup of people. So they've got people like Huckabee. They've got, uh, the, 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 what's his face? Um, Geraldo Rivera. They've got uh, Michael Savage. They've got uh, probably, and it still hasn't been announced, Laura Ingram probably. And that will give them a, you know, a good lineup. Uh, your, your question is here in Washington, what are they going to do with Laura? If she's on at nine in the morning, if she stays in that current late morning time slot, are they going to uh, move Chris Plant to something else, like uh, maybe janitor? <laughs> uh, Chris Plant is leaving his on-air post at WMAL, uh, but we're keeping him at the station. He'll be the station's janitor. <laughs> That'd be funny. Oh, I love radio. It's such a fun business, isn't it? <sighs> <laughs> all right, folks. Okay, yeah, I won't get into Zabin and Poland's gay columnist wrath things that's covered all over the place. You know, I don't. I think Steve Zabin was stupid for what he said about a transgendered athlete. Um, but you know, isn't an apology enough? I said something stupid. I apologize. What's the point of taking people off the air and suspending them? You know, if they if they if they're contrite and they're apologetic, then then so be it. Okay, you know. Yeah, people say dumb things, you know, you, you, you make, you know, you, you make dumb comments like you're, you know, and you think radio people would learn by now. You're talking that everyone's listening to what you're saying. Watch out what you say because uh, it gets you into trouble. <laughs> but then again, you know, it's going to generate his ratings up a little bit. People are going to start probably tuning in to hear what Zabin says now that he's a shock jock. <laughs> So in a weird way, saying that kind of comment can actually help your ratings. Uh. <laughs> All right, folks. Oh, yeah. And the other thing, big story we're hearing is that CBS over there at WJFK, apparently what we're hearing is that they're telling uh, their shows over there that you have a ratings goal. They're setting a ratings goal for them for the spring. And if they don't hit that ratings goal, then uh, they could get replaced with a show from this new CBS Sports Radio Network that's coming down the pike as of the beginning of January. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to hear people like John Feinstein, who has a show on the new network, back on WJFK with his show. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. With Jim Rome, Doug Gottlieb, Scott Farrell, um, they could all, you know, end up back on JFK. A lot of them have been on JFK, they've been off JFK, whatever. They could be they could end up, you know, in place of some of the um, you know, evening, overnight, weekend, midday stuff. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of those talents on the air on JFK in the upcoming year. Uh, I think the junkies are probably pretty safe. And I think that uh, LeVar Arrington and that guy he's paired up with, damn, I can never remember him. Um, Chad something or other. Um, I think they're probably safe. 
you know, you got to have a, lo a local show in your drive times if you're a sports talker. I mean, if the Redskins do a big win or the Nationals do something, you know, you, you want a local show to talk about that the next day, right? So, you know, I, I can't imagine uh, JFK putting CBS Sports Radio Fair in drive times. Just doesn't make no sense to me. All right, folks, that's Dave TV for today, 12-12-12. Uh, don't forget, help us out. Support the site. Please send us bucks. Bring the piles of money. And <laughs> uh, oh, gosh, I still didn't get that damn. I had an English muffin this morning. It's still in the beard. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, book them, Dano.